Hello and welcome to Garden Planning with a Biodynamic Moon Calendar. It is March 2024. My name is Katrina Wolf. My business is Blue Borage and I love helping people make sense of the Biodynamic Moon Calendar. So let's get into it. I recommend each month you create a sort of overall plan that ties in with your annual goals. So rather than starting by looking at the calendar, start by honing in on what you want to achieve in the garden for the month ahead. So my uh, plans for March are pretty simple. It's number one, plant up edible beds for autumn and winter. Number two, get set to make lots of compost preps here at the soil farm. And three, enjoy peach season cooking and preserving each and every day. So the biodynamic preparations, I need cow manure for CBP. I need a few items for uh, the oak bark preparation. And then I actually need to make that CPP. Otherwise, I am just going to go with the flow and enjoy the end of the warm weather. So if you find this layout useful, it is a free download and I've got the link in the comments below this video. So next up, let's look at the key dates. Just trying to scroll to the next screen. Next slide, here we go. Key dates for March. We've got the full moon on Monday the 25th, the new moon on Sunday the 10th, Moon opposite Saturn on Saturday the 23rd. We start the month with five days in the ascending period on the 5th. It moves into the descending period and then back to ascending for the last part of the month from the 18th through to the 31st. We've got two nodes, one on the 12th and one on the 26th. So if that is all the information you need, then you can click out and go get started with your garden planning. From here on in, I'll uh, show photos from my gardening projects and talk through how the year is going from a biodynamic perspective. Uh, so let's go onwards. Oops. So here I, um, I'm up to six gardens I attend. <laughs> I've taken on a new project. It's been just a couple of weeks down the bottom right, this inner city restaurant herb garden. And oh my goodness, this place is beautiful. I just love it. It is the French Cafe on Simon Street. Uh, they call it Uptown. So it's kind of near the junction where Simon Street goes off into, I think, New North Road and Mount Eden. And I have planted up the sort of three layered raised bed on the left. There's another three tiered bed on the right. And then going straight ahead, turn off to the left, there's a, a beautiful courtyard where I am sweeping up autumn leaves and trimming things to keep it nicely maintained. I think other projects haven't changed. These are pictures of when I took them on. So Blue Borage, the soil farm, it was a paddock. Uh, the Sharda Centre Food Forest, it hasn't changed all that much. It is still a slope with a lot of kaiku grass, jasmine, convolvulus. Um, next one along is Hazel's Garden. This is my daughter Jessica's rental house in Ōtipoti, Dunedin. And so she has a little container garden. To the museum, this is the neglected piece of land behind the museum along the railway line that I have asked them to stop spraying glyphosate and I'll plant flowers. And then bottom middle is Whangarata Community Hall, which is a sort of um, five minute walk from where I live. Less than a minute in the car if I'm teaching a workshop and it's full of gear. So my notes from February, if you've been following along for a while, I've started putting the end of month reflections. So Northland was amazing. I was up there for the uh, Te Ara Mara Kai or Tai Tokoro, the Northland Edible Garden Trail. Um, once I got home, all the attention kind of went to the French cafe and also meeting with another restaurant owner, which was Michael Durth at The Grove. 
Uh, I did a free event at the library in Soil Farm. I have so many peaches to to chop up and turn into chutneys and sauces and all sorts. Um, it's just delicious. It's one of my favourite times of the year here. There have been lots of meetings and not a heck of a lot of time spent in the garden at home. Uh, now, the photo on the right, that is one of my followers, uh, Sarah Hargraves, who is um, a permaculture educator and consultant. So she does gardens and she has invited me to come along and do a composting workshop when she teaches her next permaculture course. Uh, so she saw my peach dilemma and offered me a dehydrator, which is just wonderful. And I gave her a jar of the peach sauce and she'd seen the story on Instagram where I got Michael and uh, Corey Campbell as head chef and Andrea Martinisi, the sommelier, the, the three of them tried it. And my peach sauce was turned into peach bellinis at the Grove night night. <laughs> kind of exciting and super fun. So the soil farm photo bottom right, this is how it was looking. I've decided to take a photo the first of each month so that hopefully over the course of a year, I take um, four photos, one from each corner, that we can see the seasons change and hopefully see more color, more height, more um, really filling out all the possible space. I do need to keep vehicle access, so there will always be a, um, <clears throat> a grassy strip. The photo bottom left was um, guests from Switzerland, Ursula and Bernard. That's Bernard in the white t-shirt with Mary and this is my landlady Marine with the um, red skirt and the black top and we opened up two identical hot compost piles. One of them had biodynamic preparations, the other one didn't and so we did a bit of a comparison. These photos are from Oramahoe where I was staying at the home of Graham Kettle and Debbie Raphael and so top right this was our hot compost workshop bottom left was the 500 stir which was the same day in the evening and bottom right was at the end of the hot compost workshop I suggested that the group who were interested in continuing to make hot compost could start making the biodynamic preparations if they wanted to form a group and work together and collaborate. Some people can grow herbs, other people can have a CPP pit. And it was just magical to see most of the participants gather in a little huddle and go, okay, how are we going to make these preparations as a community? And that seemed to be the feel up north. Of such a strong sense of community. This is uh, the French cafe. So there's the little... um side garden on the left I have been stirring CPP each time I go in so the three jars here the bottom jar was the very first CPP made at Naus Vineyard a gift from Murray Cook at the biodynamic conference in May last year and then I've got biodynamic compost from Fangarata and CPP sorry biodynamic CPP from Fangarata and then the top one is a batch made at the Shada Centre so uh, bringing the energy of those three pieces of land right into the heart of Auckland City. And when I shared this on Instagram, Murray was really impressed. He said, oh my goodness, they stock our wine. <laughs> so um, he has now offered to send up some 500. So at some point, maybe, fingers crossed, we'll do a 500 stir at the French Cafe. This is uh, one of the citrus trees out the back in the courtyard that I've... Um, planted nasturtium around that will hopefully trail down. Uh, top right, this is Jake who works at OMG. Uh, those are the uh, veggie boxes. I'm not sure if those are ready to be picked up or if they're partway through being assembled, but it was just such a buzz on the first day at the French Cafe to walk across the road and buy seedlings from Jake to supply to help fill out those beds. Um, you know, this is, this is the future of our food system is urban farmers collaborating with restaurants and cafes. Uh, so the last two pictures here, this is a carbon cycle compost box with uh, the 20 litre orange bucket and the white bucket. Altogether, that's 32 litres of food scraps 
that I put into the box to make soil to go back to the French cafe. I'm also adding in the garden waste. So these are the leaves and, and various trimmings that I, I gather up as I'm tending the garden. That all goes into the box. And I think I've probably added about 100 litres of my own biodynamic soil just to kickstart these raised beds. Um, yeah. Okay, here we are at the museum. And this is Vic Harry, who together with another volunteer, John, tends the side section beside the museum where they're growing vegetables. I grow the flowers out the back and they grow vegetables. So for the last few sessions on Thursday mornings at the museum, we've been having um, tomato and crackers at morning tea time. It's just so lovely. I love tomato season. Um, the bucket of flowers here at the top, they are the flowers that I'm picking each week and I've started dropping them off to the library for the youth centre to bundle up and give to someone in the community. So this is the library and back in January with the school holiday program, we installed a hungry bin worm farm. Some of the children helped Amanda, the librarian. This is Amanda on the left with the blue top and black trousers. So uh, these children are responsible for looking after the worm farm. The after school program is based at the library twice a week. So it just makes sense to have the worm farm there. And it is just such a buzz to be creating these networks of soil making in Tuaco and to have the support of people like Amanda at the library and uh, Jay at the youth centre and of course all the children and their families. So photos of my six gardens. Top left soil farm, it's all about peaches, the Sharda Centre food forest. We've got apples and the apples are falling on the ground and they are so yummy. So Monday, um, <coughs> Monday the 4th of March is my monthly circular gardening session at the Sharda Centre and we will be um, processing some of the apples. So some of the apples we will uh, pick and cook during the day and some of them will get a group of children after school to come and help. Fingers crossed it'll be the youth group, um, but I'm just waiting to hear if it's all going to tie up. Next photo, uh, Hazel's garden. I asked my daughter Jessica for a photo of what they're picking from the garden and she said it's everything on this plate except for the eggs and the cucumber. So little Hazel loves munching on parsley and I guess uh, under the cucumber there is some lettuce and they've got peas and I've got a four minute video of Hazel munching through her afternoon tea and it's just delightful. Um, okay, bottom left, Tuaco Museum Pollinator Garden, a sample of buckets of flowers. And the middle at the bottom, Whangarara Community Hall. As we go into autumn, the oak tree is going to start dropping a lot of leaves. And even though I haven't made any progress on getting the premises to be spray free, um, I don't mind driving up there once a week to sweep the fallen leaves and getting them bagged up to make leaf mold. It's it's when I start hosting composting workshops and my students are handling weeds and we're foraging for edible weeds that I really don't want to be encountering the glyphosate um, in a sort of skin-to-skin -skin contact. Um, and then bottom right, the inner city restaurant herb garden. I've already talked about the carbon cycle compost bin and the buckets of food scraps. And um, what I've agreed with the French cafe is that I'll take one day's worth of scraps from the day before I come to do the garden and then a, a second bucket that they can um, fill with the meal prep while I'm out in the garden but they, they don't have storage space for a whole week's worth of food scraps and they cannot have uh, smelly food scraps or flies because it's such a, um, a small space that they're working in. So it's bit by bit by bit. And okay, goals for the month ahead. And I'm not tracking so well with my goals. So these are aspirational. 
Here at the soil farm, it's still plant up food for autumn winter. winter. Uh, track down the items I need for the BD505 oak bark preparation. If you would like to be part of that, please send a message. Um, and then just, I'm enjoying the peaches. It's like breakfast, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, last thing at night, I'm picking a peach from the tree and munching on it. They're so sweet and juicy. And then the fruit that's fallen to the ground, some of it has... Um, a little bit of bruising or some marks. Uh, I don't have the brown rot problem that I had this time last year. So I'm able to um, cook a lot more of the peaches. Then French Cafe Garden. I'd like to install a few more worm farms into the herb, herb garden and get that um, circular system um, in place without me having to bring the food scraps or back to the soil farm to turn into soil to send back. Uh, next up, I would love to get the youth centre to come over to the Shada Centre Food Forest and, and see if there's an ongoing collaboration we can explore. Hazel's Garden down in Dunedin. I would love for Jessica to get a Verdia planter. I've asked uh, Richard Moore if he would consider doing rental agreements for university students. Um, Jessica's main objection when I was down there for summer school was that when she finished this university, she wouldn't be keeping the planter, that she didn't want me buying it for her. And I think Richard will be on board with uh, the rental agreement. So that's exciting. Whangarata Community Hall, I think I will book a day in April because it's a clash for the circular gardening with the Shada Centre. So I'm starting to think, okay, where are the different venues that I can use? And um, the library was good, um, but I'd like to try the community hall. And then the next goals up at the museum, it's time to ask for some help, I think, with the pollinator garden, um, with the weeding, just to get a weed eater for a few hours. Be nice to plan a daily event, make the next batch of CBP, carry on composting. And then we've got the circular gardening event this Sunday on the 3rd of March. And this Sunday, the topic will be seed saving. And then at Shada, um, same goals as last month, just to solidify that new pathway with some pavers. Um, the next circular gardening event, March the 4th, we'll be focusing on apples. Um, apples and companion planting, I think. And some signage for the herbs. So, a busy month ahead. And yet, not all of it uh, is terribly fussy with the calendar. So what I've marked in here is really the optimal planting, composting, and BD prep making is that period from sort of the 6th of March down to 13th, 14th, 15th. That's when I would really love to be getting some prep making done. Otherwise, it is um, the North Waikato Sustainable Arts Festival. I've got EcoFest in Grey Lynn, DIY Almanac Calls, Seed Saving, the weekend event, and there's also um, probably weekly visits into the French Cafe. So I am a busy soilpreneur. Um, so to close off, if you would like help, planning your gardening tasks you can always reach out to me katrina at blueborange.co.nz um, and i'll pop all the relevant links in the comments attached to this video hope you have a wonderful month ahead and i'll see you next time